What a pleasure it is to be with you here this morning at Atonement. Um, you know, you, you come into, my name is Paul Gossman. I'm the, the executive director of World Mission Prayer League. Uh, we work around the world, but today we're working right here in Fargo. And uh, what a pleasure it is to have our Congolese brothers and sisters with us as well. Thank you for your music and for just your faith as well. World Mission Prayer League is privileged to, to have partners in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And when I've been there and worshiped with the Lutheran Church in the Democratic Republic of Congo, the music has just been so exceptional, just so fabulous and so uplifting. I told them, you know, in heaven, we will be worshiping with every tribe, every language, every people group on earth will be there in heaven worshiping with us. And uh, we'll all be singing. And I'll be singing in our languages and our music and everything else. But I told my brothers and sisters in the Democratic Republic of Congo while we were worshiping there, I believe you will be in charge of the music. And I, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that, you know. But, uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, hey, this text we just heard read, this... These are the words of Jesus, the risen Lord Jesus, to his disciples. Now, if a person comes back from the dead, you better listen to him. We're going to unpack some of these words today. They, they have a profound influence on us who believe in Jesus Christ. My hope would be that they would today. They can change not just your life. They can change the world. Indeed, these words from Jesus have changed the world. And they will continue to change the world as indeed they change us. So that would be my prayer today, that that can happen. So before we do that, let's just go to the Word. Let's go to the Lord and, and ask for His help in this time, shall we? Oh, Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank You. Thank You that You loved us so much that You sent Jesus to be our Savior. We thank You, Lord God, that He died and rose again for us. He did that. And that He then shares this message with us, that we would know of His love that we then would be witnesses of what he's done in the world, what he's done in our lives that all, all nations might know. Well, we're here this morning, uh, I suppose, in some ways like those first disciples, some of us here worshiping you and yet in awe, but maybe, maybe a little unsure about some things as well. That's just our human condition, just like the first disciples, and yet you spoke into their lives, you did mighty things that changed the world. Lord, we would dare to ask here that you would do the same among us. And I would ask, Heavenly Father, that you would not allow any unworthiness on my part to interfere with what you want to speak into our lives this day, Lord, through your word. And so we commit this time to you, Lord God. Open our ears, open our eyes, open our hearts to your word, we pray in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, how many of you... How many of you have a to-do list now? Do you, do you have a to-do list? Yeah? Do you, do you like me? I keep mine on my phone. It's, it's right here. It's this kind of constant thing there. I'm not sure I like it that being that constant, but I, I've got this to-do list. Everybody got them? How many of you love to-do lists? Anybody? You love to-do lists? I'm not seeing a lot of lovers of to-do lists here in this, in this congregation. Um, well, how many of you have a... Uh, unfinished task list. How about that one? What's, what's on your unfinished task list? What's, what's unfinished on your task list? Somebody be brave and tell me what it is. Unpacking boxes that I've been <laughs> Oh, wow, yeah. How many of you have unpacked boxes in your house and they've been there like for years? Anybody? Oh, wow, that's an embarrassment, isn't it? Okay, very good. That's great. Anybody else? What do you have? Unfinished task. Anybody? What do you have? What do you got? Dishes. The dishes. <laughs> Are you one of those homes where they kind of mount up in the sink, in the sink for a while and then you realize you've got to wash them because you have to eat? Oh, okay, yeah. Well, you know, there's a reason things remain on our unfinished task list. Now, there may be any, any number of reasons, I suppose, but I think that the primary reason things remain on our unfinished task list is we're simply not passionate about them. Apparently, those boxes don't have anything in them that really interests you that much. And apparently, you all are not that passionate about washing dishes, you know. Personally, uh, you know, come later in the year, next year, I'll, I'll move into the spring, and my taxes will not be done. They'll be on that unfinished task list. Anybody else on that front? Why? I'm not passionate about my taxes. Things remain on our unfinished task list because we, quite frankly, are simply... 
we're not, uh, we're not passionate about them. Today I want to talk to you about, see if that works. Where am I supposed to point that? Oh, there we go. Hey, it works. There we go. I want to talk to you about an unfinished task. Uh, but, but before I do that, I want to talk to you about something that Jesus indeed did finish. See, Jesus is passionate about you. Jesus is passionate that you would be reconciled to your creator. He's passionate that you would be free of guilt and fear and shame in this life. He's passionate that you would know you're loved and know how to love in a powerful, godly way. He's passionate that you would know his love. He's passionate indeed that all the world would. And this is why he died on a cross. Looking for where, there it is. On the cross, hands outstretched, nailed to the cross, he said, it is finished. It was finished that your sins were paid for. It was finished that your eternity was gained. And it was so because he was passionate about you being saved, you being forgiven, you being reconciled to God. And so it is that he could have said, it is finished. Finished. Our salvation was won. It was purchased. But there remains an unfinished task on Jesus' list. And, and he alludes to it in this conversation he had with his disciples after he rose from the dead. The truth is this. When he died on the cross, he didn't die just for you and for me. He died for all nations, all people of all time. And there remain... On this earth, many who have yet to hear that. He wants disciples to be made of all nations. He wants all people everywhere to know of his love for them and what he did for them on the cross. There's this unfinished task on Jesus' list of reaching all nations. This map illustrates that unfinished task, my friends. If you look at the red areas... Those red areas are where the majority of people do not know of Jesus Christ. Indeed, they have no opportunity to know of the love that God has for them in Jesus Christ because there live among them no Christians. There are not among them any churches. They do not have the Bible, the Word of God, that would express to them the very love of God for them. They have no opportunity to know of Jesus. They are those that we would speak of as the unreached a third of the world's population, I want you to consider that for a moment, a third of the world's population are in this category. They have no opportunity, literally, for no one has yet gone to them to be a witness. We're talking about 7,000 different people groups, more or less. Groups that are defined by their language, their geography, their culture, distinct people groups who still have not heard, as you and I have, about God's love for them in Jesus Christ. My friends, this is the unfinished task of Jesus. But he's passionate about it. He's passionate about it because it's made up of real people, my friends. It's not just a map. It's not just colors on a, on a globe. These are real people like these, this man and, and these young men behind him or these children right here. And I took these pictures where in a place where I was unable to take photos of women, so just add women into the mix, okay? And they're all over the world. They're of all different kinds of sorts and people groups. This is the unfinished task, my friends. There we go. Jesus is passionate about this task of reaching all nations. And I pray that he would make us passionate about the same. I fear that we're not. I fear that the church in North America in particular is not especially passionate about this. The facts are this. Of all the resources, all the individuals that we send into missions, and, 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 and the church in North America has been engaged in missions for generations and generations, but today, of all the resources, of all the individuals and such that we send into missions, only about 1% of all that goes to reach those 
in this category I'm talking about, those who have little or no access whatsoever to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Sincerely, my prayer is that Jesus would make us passionate about this, his unfinished task, that all nations would be reached with the gospel. Indeed, I think what Jesus has to say here It moved the disciples, the very first disciples, in that very direction. And I pray that it might do the same for us even today. Now, as I look at what Jesus had to say with his disciples, I'll share with you that I find here five reasons, five reasons that Jesus is passionate about this unfinished task of reaching all nations. Now, I'm sure there are more than five here, but I like five because I got five fingers on my hand, and so do you, at least most of you, I'm sure. So, five different reasons that Jesus believes that, that this is something important, that we reach all nations with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go first to the, the very first reading right here, these verses, to discover the first one. Let me read it to you. As the disciples were talking about all these things, Jesus himself, he stood among them, this is right after the resurrection, and said to them, peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, but why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, well, have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and ate before them. My friends, Jesus is passionate about this unfinished task of reaching all nations because he's alive. <laughs> he's alive. I suppose if you've died and then come back to life, you really, really know that you're alive. Someday I'm going to die. Someday you're going to die too. And, and by the grace of God, we'll find ourselves in heaven. And the day I find myself in heaven, having died and now alive again, I'm going to go, I'm alive. <laughs> Jesus experienced something that you and I have not experienced. He died. He felt it. He bled it. He hurt. He died. But then he rose again. This, my friends, changes everything. Jesus is passionate that all nations would know him because he's alive. He's real. He's not just an imagination. He's not just a story. He's not just a spirit. He's real. What's more, he now invites his disciples into that reality. Come on, check me out. Touch me, see me, talk to me. Please know that I am alive. I died and I rose again for you. And I want to be present in your life. I want you to be present with me. Let's have a meal together. Jesus is all about inviting his disciples into this reality that he is alive. Amen. My friends, this is something he desires for all the world. He desires this for all the world. And yet there are those who do not know they have a Savior who died, who rose again, and who lives today for them and with them. You see, after the resurrection, Jesus ascended into heaven. We know this, right? Well, he ascended into heaven so that he would not be present only in that room where the disciples were, but so that he could be present in this room where these disciples are right here in Fargo. And so that he could be present wherever there are people worshiping and honoring his name this day. Amen? But more than that, my friends, Jesus is present in every corner of the earth where he desires to be. He is already present where we have not yet gone with the gospel. For he is preparing the way. He is at work in the world inviting us to believe that he is alive. Inviting us to believe that he enters into people's lives and inviting us to be part of it. Jesus is passionate about this unfinished task because he is alive. Here's my second reason. 
Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. Jesus is passionate, my friends, about this unfinished task because he knows the story. <laughs> Jesus knows the story. Now, um, I missed going to the movies during the pandemic. Anybody else? I, I, I love going to the movies, and I missed going to the movies. And now I'm back to going to the movies. Um, and I love going to the movies because, well, who doesn't like a good story? And, and when you go to a movie, you know something about the story. I never want to know the whole thing. Please, don't give me the, don't, don't, don't give me the end of the story. Uh, I want to know something in the story. And I get excited about hearing a story that I know there's going to be a great ending to. I want to go and discover what that story is. Jesus has a story, and he knows that story. What's more, you're in it. <laughs> Jesus knows the story, my friends, from the beginning to the very end. He knows the story of why it was that you and I were even created and why all those billions that we do not know and still do not know Jesus, why they were created. He knows their stories and he knows how they fit into his story. From long ago until now, God has been at work unfolding that story and Jesus knows the story. He knows why it is that he came. He knows why it is that he ministered to people with love and compassion. He knows why it is that he showed that he had the power to heal, the power to cast out demons. He knows why it is that he walked on this earth, why he then was nailed to a cross. He knows why it is that he rose from the dead so that he might change the world and bring all into that story. He's not finished with the story. He's not finished with you. This is why he invites you again into that story. And the story includes the entire planet, all people. You're part of that story. You ought to know he is not finished with you. <laughs> As your story unfolds, you need to come and realize, we all do, that, that Jesus is the author of that story. And that as he's writing your story and my story, it folds into the grander story. He opened the minds of those disciples so that they might begin to understand that. It's right there in Scripture. It's right there in the Bible. And so as we open up the Bible, we become aware of parts of the story that we've not previously known. And Jesus then begins to reveal parts of the story, invite us in, so that we, my friends, will know where we are going. Now, there's parts of the story that we, we don't yet know. Uh, we, we know there are parts of the world that have yet to, to see a, a witness of Jesus Christ there. And we don't know who he's going to send there. We don't know how they're going to get there. But we do know this. That the plan of Jesus, his story, is that somebody will go there. That somebody will tell them about him. And that there will be people saved. This is the story he knows. He's not finished with the story yet. Just as he's not finished with your story yet. He invites you in just as he invited the disciples in. To know what role you have in that grand story. So, that's the second reason Jesus is pretty excited and, and passionate about this unfinished task. Here's, here's the next one. I think somebody's putting it forward for me. Okay, I think we're good. Okay. Would you read this one with me? This is a great verse for us to all know. Read it with me, if you will. That repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Fargo. No, Jerusalem. We'll get to that later. Here you go. Let's read it one more time. That repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. Here is why Jesus is so passionate about this unfinished, uh, this unfinished task. He has something to give. Jesus has something to give. Something to give away. Um... I begin noticing they're trying to get us to buy stuff for Christmas. Have you seen that? 
It's big time now. And uh, in particular, they want us to buy stuff that we can give. Um, How many of you love giving gifts? There's something really special about giving a gift. Would you agree? And especially when you're giving a gift to somebody that you know they're going to really enjoy it. They might even be surprised by that gift, right? That it's going, to, it's going to just be a delight to them. And you've got that gift and you're going to give it. There's something fabulous about that. That's the way Jesus is. He's got a gift. He's got something to give. And it's something that's needed beyond anything else. It is forgiveness. It is healing of the soul. It is hope. It is peace with God and with others. It is reconciliation. It is the gift that our world needs beyond all other gifts, my friends. There is nothing our world needs more right now than the love of God and forgiveness one for another. And that's the gift he has to give. This is why Jesus is so passionate about this unfinished task. He has something to give. (laughs) The reality, my friends, is that, that he wants to see the power of sin and death defeated. He wants to see people forgiven, reconciled, healed, at peace. And it's not just for eternity, this gift. This is for the moment. This is for the day. This is for the city. This is for the situation. This is for the family. This is for the argument today and tomorrow. This is for everything in our lives that God would give this gift of his grace and his forgiveness. The world desperately needs this, my friends. I'd ask this. Is it enough to be loved if you do not know that you are loved? I know my wife loves me. If she loved me but I didn't know, it wouldn't have the impact on me that it does. Likewise, I know Jesus loves me. And he's given me this gift. I do not deserve it, my friends, but to know that he loves me, that he has given me forgiveness. My friends, to know that changes my life and changes yours and will change the world. Jesus has something to give. And we live in a world that that horribly, horribly, tragically lacks forgiveness. We live in a world where increasingly there is tolerance for everything, but never forgiveness for anything. Would you agree? It's true. You have friends and neighbors and family members and co-workers and classmates and such who, in fact, uh, are looking for things to be tolerated and not forgiven, but at the very depth of their soul, they know what they need is forgiveness. They know what they need is freedom from, from shame and from guilt and from fear. And the rest of the world needs the very same gift, my friends. Jesus has something to give, and he's given it to us that we might then give it to others. We have it, and we have it to give. So, I'm going to go to my next reason why Jesus is so passionate about this unfinished task, and here it is in this text again. That repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, to all nations, to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. My friends, Jesus sees things big, Jesus sings things really, really big. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I've got an unfinished task, I I prefer to see things small, you know. Uh, It's easier for me to kind of take it apart in small little pieces. It's something I might be able to do. But Jesus is not limited as we are limited. Jesus has no problem seeing things big. And where we cannot see all the world at one glance, he in fact can. And it's hard for us to even imagine the truly billions of people who do not yet know him. And yet he, as the song says, has the whole world in his hands. He sees things big. And what's really awesome about this, he sees you big too. (laughs) You are not small to him. You are big to him. But that is true likewise for every other soul that he has created He sees things big. He sees all nations. Imagine if you were able to speak every language on the face of the planet. That only happens in science fiction. (laughs) 
and in Jesus. Jesus knows their language. Jesus knows their heart. Jesus knows their need. Jesus knows their aches and their pains. Jesus knows their dreams. Jesus sees them and sees them big, all nations. And he would invite us into that vision. He would expand our way of understanding our world that it's not just about us and it's not just about Fargo. It's not just about Jerusalem. It's also about Judea and Samaria and the very ends of the earth. And he would expand our view that we too could see things big as he sees things big. He has his eyes set on each and every one who does not yet know him and he would have us set our eyes on some of them as well. Some would suggest, and I hate saying this, but there are those within the Christian church today, here in North America particularly, some would suggest that the world does not know, need to know about Jesus. And they are so tragically wrong. Regardless of how you might feel about someone's eternity without Jesus, I can tell you this, their current reality is far less than it would be if they did know about Jesus. And all you would have to do is speak to a person who's come to know Jesus in one of these areas of the world, in one of these people groups, and they would tell you how wonderfully different their life is now because they have been brought into this circle of knowing about God's love for them in Jesus Christ. They would tell you how they have a peace that they never had before. They would tell you how they've been freed of fear and guilt and shame in their lives. They would tell you how their entire perspective on life and community and family and love and marriage has been changed because Jesus has been made known to them. The world needs to know and Jesus sees the world. Let's allow Jesus to expand our view, friends, to see things big. This is, this is really what World Mission Prayer League is about. Now, we, we can't work in every place on the planet. We don't by any means. But what we do want to be able to do is invite people in prayer and conversation and study and learning to see the bigger picture, to see, in fact, the unreached people in the world, that one-third of the world's population that does not yet know Jesus. And partner with people to pray. And then should Lord say, I want to send you, we likewise will partner with them to send them to these parts of the world where there are so many that Jesus sees as big. Friends, there's one final reason I want to point our attention to why Jesus is so passionate about this unfinished task. Uh, well, thank you. Here it is. Verse 48. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Jesus is passionate about this unfinished task of reaching all nations because he invites others along. <laughs> He's excited about it, passionate about it, because honestly, he doesn't want to do it alone. Now, he could do it alone. And sometimes I even wonder, I'll pray, I'll say, why don't you just do this alone? <laughs> have you ever felt sometimes some tasks you have to do would just be easier if you did them alone? But Jesus has determined that he's not doing this alone. He's determined that he invites his disciples into that process. He invites you into it as well. I assure you, in this big picture and in this story, you do have a place. You do have a role. He invites you along to be part of it. And you don't do it on your own strength any more than the first disciples did. Because he said, I'm going to send my Holy Spirit to you, and my Holy Spirit will make it possible for you to do this very thing. I will be with you to the very end of the age. And yes, you will make disciples of all nations. I'm inviting you along. Jesus is so passionate about this because he invites you along. And he would invite you to be passionate about it as well, my friends. The first disciples, indeed, were empowered by the Holy Spirit, found themselves likewise so passionate about it that, in fact, each and every one of them gave their life for this. Jesus is passionate about this unfinished task. He, um, he's the one who is alive and wants people to know it. He knows the story, my friends. 
And he, he, sees, he sees that he has something to give, something he's given you and he wants to give to the rest of the world. And he sees that world and invites you in. Friends, someday we're going to be worshiping again. I mentioned it early on, the place where all the Congolese are going to be in charge of the singing, right? We're going to be singing before the throne. And every nation will be there. Every language will be there. This is the promise of God in Revelation. We'll be before the throne, giving praises to our Lord and Savior Jesus. Every nation will be there. And my friends, on that day, it'll be like no other. For they will be, we will be living because of Jesus in his presence. And Jesus looking out on that crowd and seeing all nations, he will be able to say again, it is finished. <laughs> what a glorious day that will be. And how glorious it is that you and I get to be part of it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord God, for Jesus our Savior. Thank you that in him we have life. Thank you that he rose again, that he is alive, live even right here. That he has something powerful to give us. His forgiveness, and it's meant to be given to the whole world. He knows the story. He knows what he wants our roles to be in that story. He knows where it's going. He sees all nations. He sees the big picture. Lord, help us likewise to see and to be passionate about this unfinished task, Lord. You invite us along. Show us what it is that you would have us do that someday in heaven, We'll hear Jesus again say, it is finished. We pray this, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen.